So what I have here is the Insta360 X3. You probably seen some clips from this camera in my videos where I use it to document the trip from one place to another or just to add some extra spice to the video, giving you a wider field of view of the surroundings around me. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about the X3 and also to get the best possible footage out of this, how to export the settings I use and how convenient it is to have something like this, because this is not like any other action camera on the market. So first, let's take a look at the specs which the X3 offers. Now the Insta360 X3 comes with two half inch 48 megapixel sensors, a massive 2.1 inch touchscreen, the ability to shoot me mode, HDR and 8K time lapses. How awesome is that? With industry leading flow state stabilization and a single lens mode, which allows you to shoot videos just like any other action camera and 72 megapixel photos, is it really the only camera you need? Let's find out. So one of the reasons you would want to get a 360 camera is the overall versatility it gives compared to the standard action cameras. So if you want to go from a vlogging style perspective to reveal a shot of your destination or capture a fast cinematic b-roll, you would most likely end up changing the direction of how your camera is pointing and mounted and maybe you want to double check your shot before so you make sure that you didn't miss it. But with the 360 camera, you will never miss the shot. Basically, it films everything 360 degrees, so you won't miss the shot at all. An example here is this POV shot where I'm holding the camera behind me, creating this awesome third person view. But by just pulling the camera in front of me, I have the typical vlogging style perspective. And with the Insta360 Studio app on your phone or desktop, you can easily adjust the zoom and the direction to get your preferred angle. Now, what I found to be a few cons with a regular camera or a regular action camera is that you will always have a selfie stick in your frame. And let's say if you want to go from the perspective here to a POV shot of my son, then I need to adjust the camera to get a clean shot if I don't want the selfie stick to be in the frame. And also trying to do a third person view with a regular action camera, man, it's not gonna look good at all. It looks so weird. So if you wanna get shots like that, you really want to have something like a 360 camera. So with the 360 camera and the invisible selfie stick, I don't have to worry about any of this. I can just put it in my backpack, hold it behind me or in front of me, and then later just reframe everything in the studio app or by using the free GoPro reframe add-on for Premiere Pro or After Effects. Now let's talk about the key features of the X3 here and why I think this is the perfect addition to your setup. 
First, we have the upgraded half inch sensors on the X3, which gives you a resolution of up to 5.7K up to 30 FPS. And this will also bring better low light capabilities and a crisper image in bright conditions with active HDR. The upgraded image sensor gives you a whopping 72 megapixel photos, which looks amazing. Now the photos coming from this has to be processed in the studio, but this also gives you the option to reframe and save the image you want, something you can't do with a standard action camera. With the standard action camera, you take the photo you want at that direction and you can't really go back and reframe and select a different a photo from a different angle later. So you, you basically the photo you take is what you get and you will have to turn around to the different directions to take multiple photos of everything. But with a 360 camera, you snap one shot and you have everything. And I think that is really awesome. And you can reframe it exactly how you want in the studio, which again, it's really convenient. Now, what I really like with the X3 is the single lens mode. It gives me that standard action camera look without needing to reframe the shot later, just a run and gun. Unfortunately, we're limited to 4K 30, and I wish we had at least 50 FPS, but 4K 30 is still doing an amazing job, to be honest. Now, talking about me mode, this just has to be the perfect feature if you're out doing some vlogging or if you just want to be center framed throughout the entire shot. What the me mode does is basically active tracking the subject and making sure that the subject is always in frame, which is really awesome. And you don't have to worry about how you hold the camera. It's always going to track you anyway. Now, the only downside is that you're limited to 1080p up to 60 FPS, but in good conditions, in bright conditions, it's actually doing a pretty good job. Now, let's talk about the screen of the Insta360 X3. This is huge. Now, I've said the screen on the Action 3 is by far the best screen I've used, but this is coming straight at it with a lot of power. It's super responsive and navigating through the settings is extremely satisfying. It feels like you're swiping on a phone. Now on the X3 itself here, we have a dedicated record button next to a custom button, which you can set to switch between the lenses. Whether you want to record with the lens on the front or the back in single lens mode or use both to shoot a 360 video. You can also set this to take a photo or record a video, but since we have the dedicated record button on the left hand side, I would keep this to switching lenses because it's going to be so much more convenient when you go back and forth between the the different editing styles, whether you want to use the single lens or a 360 camera. On the side, we have the power on off button and a quick switch button to select a pre-made profile or your own custom made profile. On the other side, we have the upgraded 1800 milliamp hour battery, which also holds your SD card. And above that, you have the USB-C connection to transfer media or charge your X3. Now the X3 also has four microphones with direction focus. This means your audio will always come from the direction your camera is facing. And when you reframe your shot in the studio app, the audio will follow no matter direction, which is really awesome. That means however you record with this and however you reframe in post, if you change the direction in the studio app, the audio is gonna follow to that direction. So if I'm talking here and another one is talking over there, I can frame myself and then the audio will come from me. But as soon as I turn the camera in uh, the studio app towards the other person, the audio is going to follow to that person, which is really intuitive and something which you can only find with the X3. Now, as for durability, it's also waterproof down to 10 meters or 33 feet. So you don't have to worry about getting any dive cases for this if you just want to take it out for a dip and do some basic snorkeling. But if you're going to scuba dive, anything like that, which is deeper, highly recommend that you get a dive case. The X3 also has Deep Track 2.0, which easily tracks your subject or object with a single tap. So yeah, is it really the camera you need? Well, I will leave that up to you, but I know for a fact that this is the perfect addition to my GoPro Hero 10 and my Action 3. And also with the other travel equipment that I bring, like my Mini 3 Pro and my Avara and my Sony A7S 3 this is the perfect addition for me. And this is basically recording everything around me and I can go back and reframe later by zooming in if I want the shot to be closer or I can do some crazy stuff with it, which looks pretty cool if you ask me. So this is, you know, this is a keeper. If I should recommend it by now, I would, because it's going to make everything more fun 
and it's gonna make your overall uh, solar creating experience much better because this is such a versatile camera and you can capture different angles. You can really spice up your videos by using something like this. And also something to add to that, this is a 360 camera, so it records everything and you will never miss the shot, which is one of the reasons that this is coming with me everywhere. But having a 360 camera is one thing, but how do you actually get the most out of this and how do you get the best quality coming from a 360 camera and especially the X3? Now the key element is of course the sun. You always want bright conditions when you're recording videos with a 360 camera. And there's also a few settings that you want to change before you start recording and also before you export. So. Turning on the X3 here, you wanna set your record settings first. By default, it should be 5.7K 30fps, and this is what you're gonna use anyway, so you don't have to change any of that. Now, if you select the camera icon, you can see all the different shooting modes and also the option to change to single lens mode. Now, the first thing you should do is to go through all the different shooting modes, not only the ones you'll be using the most, but all. Trust me, you'll end up using them or testing them at least, so you wanna change the settings on them. So by starting off with changing all the settings once you get your X3, they will be locked in place. So whenever you change to photos, HDR or time-lapse, the settings you change to will stay in place unless you change it again. This makes it much faster and easier to record your next session. And the same thing goes for the other settings as well, like color, white balance, etc. So to change this, you swipe left on the screen from the right side. Now the settings that I use with the X3 are auto settings with a custom white balance and a custom exposure value and also the color profile vivid. Now as for normal settings, I use a max ISO of 800, the shutter speed is 1 over 60 since I'm recording in 30 FPS, and I also use the vivid color profile and a white balance between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin. So these are pretty common settings and there's not much to change to be honest, but where I have noticed a difference is in the sky and this actually tends to blow out the sky a little bit more. So a pro tip here is to decrease the exposure value to minus 0.5 or minus one. And once you do that, you can also take a quick shot of your scenery and then you can flip out your phone, go into the studio app on your phone and check out the content uh, you recorded and then see if the sky is blown or not. And then go out from the settings that you tested and choose the correct settings for your sequence. Simple as that, really, really intuitive when you have the app, which makes it so much convenient to get into the 360 world. There's also tons of awesome features that you can test out, which is really cool. And we're gonna come back to that in a different video. Now, going back to the main screen here and swiping down, we get into the quick menu. Here you have the settings like screen brightness, wind reduction, audio level, pre-record time, and more. And on the bottom right section here, we have the settings menu. Here you want to scroll down and make sure that the bitrate is set to high and the video sharpness is set to medium or low. So if you're gonna export your videos from your phone, I recommend having this on medium as it adds a little bit more crisp to your image. But if you use a laptop or a desktop computer uh, to adjust your videos, you want this to be set to low. That means you can add the sharpening in post if needed, and this will also give you a much better image as you have more control over the sharpness. So how do you get good quality footage from the X3? First, you need a computer. Even though the Insta360 mobile app is fantastic and allows you to edit videos and upload anywhere, even use crazy time lapses to create something wild, you would need a computer to get the best image quality from this device. So let's head over to the Insta360 Studio app. Now, plugging in your SD card, you will get the option to select clips to import or import all. So let's just go on and import all. Now, this is where you do all the magic. So if we double click on a file here, you will get a preview. And on the right side of that preview screen, you can see the different sections to adjust civilization, audio, color boost, and etc. And by click holding on the video inside the preview screen, you can drag this to either side and up and down to reframe your shot. On the bottom section, you have a trim out and trim in, also the audio levels, keyframe markers, deep track 2.0, and time shift and motion blur. 
Now on the right side of the previous screen, you can also see it says 16 by nine. And this is the aspect. Now what's really awesome here is that you can export the exact same video in both 16 by nine and nine by 16 for either TikTok or Instagram at the same time. I will come back to that in a second. But first let's take a look at the keyframing. So what I'm gonna do is to find the position in the clip here and use the trim handles to, to find the in and out of, of the clip I want to use. And uh, I'm also gonna put a keyframe at the beginning and then reframe. Now, the next step is to go to somewhere in your video right before you want to apply a change to the angle and then make another keyframe. And now to the part where you want to add that change and then adjust the angle and add a new keyframe. So now we have three keyframes here, and if we do a playback, we can see the camera changing from one position to another. But something is off, doesn't have a smooth start or ending. So taking a look at the yellow line between the keyframes here, if we click on that, you have a few options to choose from. What I found to be the best is the last option, the fade in, fade out. So selecting this on all the lines between the keyframes, our shot looks so much better. So I went ahead and added a few more keyframes as well. So let's uh, export this and see how the quality comes out. So to export this, we're gonna click on the yellow button on the bottom right corner. So now we have the export settings and the location of where we want to export to. So the export settings you want to change is the encoding format. We're gonna change this to ProRes 422. We can also see that the resolution is set to 1080p, so we're gonna change this to 4K. So this is basically the only settings you have to change upon export. And you can also save this as a preset, so the next time you export, it will automatically select this preset. Now let's say you want to export the same video, but in 9x16 for let's say Instagram or TikTok, then we're just gonna add this to Q. On the left side, you can see the files that's ready to be exported. But first, we're gonna change the aspect of the next export to nine by 16. And once we change this, again, we're gonna click on the yellow export button and then add to Q. But also make sure that the resolution is set to 4K. So that's gonna be a 2160 by 3840. So just like 16 by nine, but the other way. And now clicking on Q, uh, we have the two files ready to be exported. So now we can select both of the clips and right click and then start the export. Now, once we're done with the export, we can take a quick look here. This is how it looks on Instagram and this is how it looks on uh, uh, YouTube. And in order to get the best possible quality coming from this, you have to export everything in uh, ProRes 422 and you also have to export in 4K and you also have to do some adjustments in post-production, like maybe adding uh, some different uh, color tweaks, like correcting the image a little bit so we don't have that much grain in the highs and lows. And you can also add some noise reduction in case you're experiencing some grain. But the key is, bright conditions. As long as you record in bright conditions, you're gonna have a perfect result with your X3. Now, the X3 is not only a 360 camera, it's a creative tool to enhance your videos, to give your videos a different perspective and to add the extra spice on your next trip. And that's why I love the X3 so much. It's such a versatile camera and as a solo creator, it's so easy to capture the shots that I would normally need my wife to come with me to capture. Now I can do all of that with the X3. And it's such a versatile and a must have camera in addition to your current setup. And with the three meter invisible selfie stick, you know, you can capture some really amazing uh, shots. You can do some fake drone shots, which you can actually reframe to, to look a little bit cooler than maybe just a static cinematic drone shot. Like I said, if you have the perfect conditions, perfect bright conditions, it's gonna look awesome anyway. And you can really create some amazing things with this, which I'm also coming back to in one of the next videos with the X3 creative shot list. If you don't have the three meter invisible selfie stick, I highly recommend that you uh, grab this because this is the difference between between creating unique shots with the X3 and not. So let me know what you think of the Insta360 X3. Do you have it already or will you be getting it before the summer holidays? I'm really excited to bring this to Hawaii. We are going to Hawaii again soon. So I can't wait to bring the X3 with my good old 
uh, Insta360 GO 2. Hopefully we can see a GO 3 soon and that would be really amazing. I love this GO 2 so much and I love the versatility of the 360 uh, X3 camera and it's a must have if you ask me. So there will be some links down to that in the description below if you want to check it out. Also the accessories that I use with the Insta360 X3. Now if you found any value in this video let me know by dropping a like down below and also if this is the first time that you are here consider subscribing for more videos that would be really appreciated and until next time take care and I will see you in the next one.